not so much. We just wrapped up our spring vaccinations and it ended up being a beautiful day even though we've had rain the past three days. But as these bison start to uh, go into the season grazing, this is their grazing time and it's what they're great at, greatest grazer of North America. As they go into that season, they've got to be ready for those parasites because uh, because we have them in pens, we have them in fences, they're not roaming uh, up and down the Great Plains of North America, um, we have to vaccinate so that they don't get sick. Um, so that's why we work bison, because if we didn't, they're going to get wormy um, and they'll stop, um, they'll start losing weight. Uh, those parasites will get in their intestines and um, you, before you know it, if you don't pay attention to your animals, you'll lose your animals. And so um, it's a very stressful day. Um, and you know, we had several people out there with me today helping and, uh, and helping me film and whatnot. And it's, uh, I'm sure it's stressful for them too. It's a, there's a lot that goes on and, um, a lot of moving parts when you're dealing with thousand and in case an 1800 pound bison. <laughs> Um, it can get pretty tricky. Um, it's very stressful on them. They're a very social animal and uh, they get stressed out real easy. Mine are pretty calm because as you can tell I spend a lot of time with mine. And you've watched some of my videos um, compared to a lot of bison. And so what we do is we have to work our bison twice a year which I'll talk about working our bison. What does working our bison mean? Working our bison is, is getting them in a pen um, I get them in a small area and then I transition them into an even smaller area and we put them in a squeeze chute and that's where, as you'll see, Doc Parsons um, from Stratford Animal Hospital, my bison guy, gives them vaccinations and we're giving them warmer, um, we're giving them anti-parasites, uh, vaccinations is all we're doing. Uh, there's no steroids or any antibiotics or, or nothing like that necessarily. Any uh, hormones uh, for these animals, it's all strictly for their health. We do it once in the fall and we do it once in the spring. So a couple other things we did today is we also pulled hair. Uh, the, the best place for, uh, to really get a true DNA um, hair sample is from their tail. And, uh, Doc Parsons uh, pulled their hair from the tail and uh, I guess that's the strongest point to get that um, DNA sample um, from an animal, um, well, I guess without drawing blood. So you can pull hair, we package it, we put their registration numbers on it and that will go to a lab, I think it's UC Irvine is where that goes um, and it will be uh, looked at and that DNA will be like diagnosed basically or it will be um, observed and it will be able to find out genetically where that bison originates from um, and it's specifically it's end of each individual animal that we pulled hair from uh, that they'll be given an identification number and that will basically be put in the national bison registry that anybody in the world can have access to so um, Dunbar, for example, um, or Big Joe, or Eleanor, those animals will be completely registered now. And if I sell one of Dunbar's bulls or heifers at some point and uh, somebody buys it or, uh, or whatever, they can go back and see his lineage. They can see the genetics of where they come from of, of Dunbar or whoever it may be in a national registry. Um, for my bison and there's a lot of producers that do this too as well so that's why we pull hair um, and plus it's just fun to know where they're from I don't know where Big Joe Kit and Flo originate from um, I was told the rich from the original owner from Kansas different parts of Kansas well I mean there's a possible chance that they could have come from the tall grass prairie preserve there's a chance that they could have come from you know uh, Custer State Park. There's no telling where their genetics come from. And so when you register them, 
I'm gonna be able to kind of link that together and hopefully see where they're coming from. We also did preg checks today, uh, and that's where basically uh, the vet um, goes in and he's done it for so long, he can feel the calf and he can basically tell the age of the calf, of the calf and how far along um, the mama is. So um, I think we only had two that didn't, uh, that are open and that didn't get bred this year, which two of them I knew probably weren't. I had a surprise on one. My cow over here on the left, uh, she doesn't look great right now. She's lost some weight, but um, she's actually four months pregnant. Um, Dakota, in the fall of 2019, I had to take her to Doc to actually his clinic to get her worked because she was diagnosed with anaplasmosis. She probably lost like 400 pounds, a lot of weight for a really good looking cow. So last year she didn't have a calf and uh, this year she's pregnant. And so that's super exciting for her to make a major recovery because she looked terrible, uh, but we got her on the, on the good side of things. And uh, so I'm anxious to see her have a calf. Um, as well so we got a lot done today yeah we got a, we got a lot done today i think everything went well i think that uh, the herd um, my main herd which is dunbar and, and the females and then i've got three calves eleanor uh, went relatively good and then uh, big joe the two females with big joe kit and flo and uh, i think that all went pretty smooth. Kevin and I have spent a lot of time and put a lot of effort into our handling system um, because of the animals. You have to take care of these animals and you have to have safe, safe pens for them because they are beast of an animal. And so um, we've worked hard on that. And uh, that's the thing about with these bison is every time we work them, we learn something new. We, we learn what of the mistakes we have to fix when we work them. And I think we've, this is the fourth time I think we've worked them here at our own facility. And uh, it's every time we learn something. So it's, uh, it's good to do that. It's good for us. Um, but I think the main herd did really, really well. And then the also exciting thing was uh, we finally, with the perseverance of Doc, if it wasn't for him, I don't think we'd have done it, but if it wasn't for Doc telling us that we have to defeat Big Joe today, we have to beat him today, it's not gonna be, a, we're gonna let him win day, uh, we made it happen. I think it may have taken 45 minutes, maybe. I, he said, you got two options because he had already got out of the holding area at one point. If it wasn't for Doc, I don't know what we'd have really done. I think. Kevin or my wife Marissa would have probably just made a stop at some point and quit messing with Big Joe. But man, we were just persistent with him. And Doc was like, well, you, You've got to win. He said, You got two options. One, we can load him up in the trailer, or, uh, or you need to get him worked here. Those are your two options. You can't let him go at this point. And so, because remember, Big Joe had never been through a squeeze shoot, he'd never been really worked at all. And um, so, He's about to be seven years old. He's a large animal and it's very difficult to kind of handle that situation. So got his weight um, for the first time um, since I got him. That was awesome. We got his vaccinations done. We got his hair pulled uh, to get him registered and I can find some genetics out about him. So a lot of good stuff happened today. But if you're uh, uh, wanting to, to start raising bison, and you're, you're interested in it, you, you really have to be serious because you've got to invest in some good equipment. Um, you just go out, and I know it's very expensive because it takes a, uh, it takes a while to start actually making some money off these animals and, and having an income off of them, but it's all part of an investment because this is, you're not working cattle. You're not working pigs. You're not working sheep. You're, you're working essentially a, a sort of wild animal. It's in their blood. I know it seems like they're domestic animals, but there's wild in that blood. And when you pin them up and you put them in those situations, they get stressed out and it can be dangerous. And working with big, like an animal like Big Joe is dangerous. 
But if you want to have good animals and you want to see production, you want to see them have babies and you want all those things, you want to have that income, you're going to have to work them. Uh, with where they are at today, like I said, they're not roaming in the Great Plains. No fences. It's not like that. They're in a fence today. And because of that, we have to manage that by giving them vaccinations. And so as a, as a beginner, you need to have somewhere where you can work them. Uh, you need to find a good vet that knows a little bit about bison. Um, but, but, but something that really kind of encompasses all this is you just got to be with them. You got to spend time with these animals. You got to watch them. You got to learn from them. Um, and when you do that and you pay attention to the animals and you start feeding them or something, you start learning how to get them in a corral, um, those things, which takes time because you got to spend it with them, then you can start to figure your system out. And everybody's system is completely different. Everybody's is different and they do it different ways. You can learn new tricks from other producers like I have over time and I get tips from people, um, but it's, it's all about you spending time with them, reading them, watching them, they get used to you, and then figuring out how to catch them and then work them in your own facilities. Uh, but it's, it's, gotta be, it's gotta be priority to get these animals worked. As a new producer, you just need to know that ahead of time that you're gonna have to spend some money into that because you can't go half do. Um, half do will give you half do animals if you're not going all in. You, you got to go all in on these things if you want to do it right. And so that's just what I encourage um, as, a, as a young producer. We did uh, have a situation where one of the cows, Flo, who's with Big Joe, she got her head stuck between two gates or got a horn stuck between two gates and um, basically broke a horn off. She'll be fine. Um, as you know, a year ago, Eleanor, my sweet little Eleanor, she broke her horn, but it's growing back. Um, and basically it just pops off. Uh, uh, but it just, it's a shell and it just pops off and uh, it will grow back. The blood will stop bleeding. It'll clot uh, naturally on its own. Um, it, but if those are the worst things that happened, um, then we're good. We're great. They, none, none of them jumped over the crowd. None of them escaped. Dunbar didn't escape. Hey, that's the first time that's Dunbar didn't escape. So Daniel can't use that as the uh, as a line anymore. So there was a lot more positives today than there was negatives. I mean, yeah. so after we worked at Bison, <clears throat> Doc and I were able to talk, <clears throat> and what we, uh, you know, he's so he's been in this business for so long. He's been to a lot of ranches. He's, I mean, the guys traveled to Alaska. He's been all over the country. He's taken care of a lot of very important bison. He's been involved with a very, a lot of uh, bison herds, including Yellowstone and like remote Alaska herds as well. So um, the guy knows this stuff and that's why I'm so blessed and lucky that he's 35 minutes down the road from me and we're able to get him here to help work our bison. He can come in, he can give pointers and stuff, but. Today, after we worked the bison, um, he was able to uh, tell me some adjustments that I can make. Because when you have a big, an animal like Big Joe, like I've said, it changes things up because he doesn't know how to be handled because he never has been. So, you know, Doc was able to tell me, hey, we, we need to add a tub here. You need to add a, add a swinging gate where it locks. So Big Joe, once he's, and, and these bison are like this, is, is whenever, you, once they find an exit or they find a weakness, they will exploit that to their advantage and will go back to that. Luckily today, he got through a, a, a gate and, you know, we slowed down and we let him, we kind of just shoved him slowly back in. It took 30 minutes or so, but we slowly got him back to an area um, where we could actually get him down the alley and get him in the uh, squeeze chute. Um, but with all of that, are the problems that we had and, the, and, the, and it took so long, Doc said, hey, do this, do that, and um, 
we made the adju those adjustments on the fly. We used a panel with the help of Kevin and Boone and uh, Doc and I, um, you know, po poking him a little bit. We used the panel, the shutting off so he couldn't turn around like a bucking bull so fast. And we made him go straight, which is that's why he didn't want to do. But but once he did it, he went straight through there. He walked through the alleys, slammed gate. He was on the scale, we got his weight, and then he went in the squeeze shoot, and we, we won, like I said. But um, So it's nice for Doc to tell us, you know, hey, you need to put a tub here. You may change the gate here, make this smaller. And that's all part of the learning curve um, that, that goes with that. So um, just a huge help for him to be there, such an advantage. And especially as a as a beginner uh, bison rancher to learn from so much experience um, all over the country and uh, to have him right here and uh, kind of tell me what I need to fix and stuff um, um, and we'll do that but you know the next the next six months seven months that's what we'll do and we'll get prepared for the fall we'll get prepared for October November when we work them again and by that time we'll have calves. We'll spend that time getting prepared and trying to fix all those mistakes and so that we maybe don't lose a horn again and that Big Joe works better. Um, it's, all, it's all part of the growing stages and growing pains of, of raising these animals. So a lot of you know, and if you don't know, if you're a new subscriber, guys, I'm just trying to grow the herd. It's, it's that simple. Um, I wanna be able to grow and expand here on this property, we're getting a little bit to our maximum uh, of bison, but and hopefully in the near future, um, we're able to get some more land and we wanna just keep growing the herd. That's, that's basically all we wanna do. And uh, uh, the main reason is one, I, I do this for conservation. Um, this is my conservation herd. None of these animals will go to slaughter. Uh, they are just, is my breeding stock is, is another way to put it. You've got Dunbar and the cows, and then you've got Big Joe and those two ladies. I I've essentially have two herds, and I get that question a lot. I will be mixing females um, and males. I will be switching that up late this summer um, during the breeding season, so that won't happen until June, July, and August. So that'll be some big stuff happening later on um, when, when these females start coming in heat and you know we'll we'll see what will happen with big joe and, and some of my original females that i have out here and the polar bear skip don't pay attention to the polar bear out here so i got a lot of stuff happening um could have after getting some of the cows preg checked today we could have um i think maybe seven babies and we could have them i think maybe in may uh we'll we'll hopefully see some red dogs here pretty soon and that's really exciting May, June, and even into possibly July, we'll have red dogs out here very soon. And I'm really excited for that. And I know you guys are excited as well. So today, watching this, I know it's hard to watch and it's intense. And I try to bring you as close in as possible. Um, but I want you to see what really goes on behind, behind the scenes uh, of, of these animals. Uh, you see them out here grazing, you see all the uh, the majestic scenery and, and all those things that these guys provide and that you see but there's things that we got to do in the background so that we can have these animals and that they can be healthy and that they can have red dogs and you know those that's those are exciting things but it takes a lot of work to get there as you can tell so. thank you guys for watching us today thank you for being part of working the bison something that we have to do to take care of these animals and we try to keep them as healthy as possible so i know it's crazy and exciting and i know you're probably at the edge of your seat sometimes um, but that's just part of it and uh, we love what we do thank you for watching this journey and being a part of it if you haven't hit that subscribe button guys you're going to want to watch and keep up we are raising the american bison this is the nation's mammal we just love and take care of these animals and we're just very fortunate and lucky to do it and if you want to see some crazy wild action or if you want to see dunbar being dunbar being silly you can watch all that right here strictly all bison right here on cross timbers bison today i want to give a special thanks to uh, my family 
I want to thank my wife for helping today. She did a lot of the, uh, the numbers on the registration numbers. She wrote down the weights that we keep uh, track of. Um, Kevin, of course, helps take care of my bison all the time. Um, he helps me do a lot of the work around here. And um, you know, Kevin was out there today helping us as well. I want to thank Doc Parsons uh, for coming and doing his thing. Great guy great experience great knowledge for these animals and very thankful for him uh, i want to thank his grandson too uh, brandon kids not afraid of of these animals he gets in there and even with big joe he was out there and uh he can learn a lot from his grandpa and so i want to thank my buddy uh, cole and chandler from texas uh, for being here and filming everything uh, i had to fire my wife from filming because she just gets too nervous and she just can't handle it because she just cares so much she's worried about the safety of us so cole came up and, and brought chandler with them and i just thank them for that uh, being here and being a part of that and just it was a wild ride for them i'm sure it's their first time seeing bison being handled like this and so i hope they come back and, and see me again and do this again so i want to thank them I want to thank Boone uh, or Daniel from Arms Family Homestead. He always helps. He's used to working animals, and, and he's, a, he's a quality guy I can always count on. He may make a video or two of it, too, as well. So, um, and I don't mind that. Um, but I just want to thank all of them uh, because I couldn't do any of this without all those people. And so thankful for them as well. And uh, just appreciate you guys for being a part of this this whole thing because it, it, it is about a family, it's about a community and um, that's what these awesome animals provide us and so I um, just want to thank all you guys. Thank you for following. I'm rolling. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty over there. So, oh excuse me, I just burped. But hang on. The poking and the prodding looks goofy too. <laughs> she, she thinks we're trying to get her in. Um, you gonna move? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you're good. No, no, no. Just because uh, you, you keep on. Uh, oh, creeping. Way out of frame. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and gotcha. I, I feel like you're not gonna overlap B-roll with this because you're talking too much. Yeah. Am I good? Cause I'm. I will move. I, yeah. I'm just a, a teacher say, coach, you know. Yeah. I say you take one. Let's just be. Able to... <laughs> I don't need, yeah. I don't...